rough day at the mill, huh? Got that right. The usual? Mm hmm. It's hard being a colonel in the Union Army. So what's your story? Me? I'm Emerald Severett Burnside. Well, just so happens that I'm an interviewer reporter. We're here with Emerald Severett Burnside. I'm Scratchy Bojangles, the monkey interviewer for MMN, Monkey Midnight News. Emerald Severett Burnside, you were a general in the Union Army. What do you think your significance was in the war, the Civil War? I was assigned to Colonel once the Civil War broke out. I led a brigade at the Battle of the First Bull Run. I was also successful at the battles of New Bern and Roanoke Island. Because of these successes, I was offered McClellan's job over control of the full main Union Army. But I denied a spot. Why'd you deny the spot? Because I did not think I was qualified. In fact, I was offered it a second time and denied it also. For the same reason? Yep. Well, what happened after that? I fought at South Mountain and played a major role in the Battle of Antietam, but I didn't exactly help the Union to victory. Well, what was your battle strategy? Actually, I have a map of the battle right here. As you can see, I helped capture Stone Bridge, but I took too long doing so, which allowed the Confederates to once again recapture the line that we broke through. So your lack of success only exemplified why you weren't the right guy for the job? Exactly, and I haven't even gotten to Fredericksburg yet. So what happened at Fredericksburg? Well, first off, after Antietam, Lincoln assigned me to McClellan's replacement, and I had no offer, I had no alternative but to refuse the offer, even though I was hesitant to do so. Lincoln then approved my plan to capture the Confederate capital of Richmond, which this plan led me through Fredericksburg, where I have another map of the battle right here. Through this plan, I moved way too quickly through the town of Fredericksburg, which allowed Lee and his troops to capture the heights alongside the town, where they could easily fend off our attacks. I took full blame for this loss of the Union. So is that when you wanted to quit and retire from the job? Yeah, but the Union wouldn't let me do so. What are you doing? So what would you do after that? Well, I wasn't even done at Fredericksburg. We tried my first campaign, which was called the infamous Mud March afterwards, where I tried to bring my troops around and cross the river without Lee knowing, but the night that we tried to do it, it was storming, and the road got so muddy we had to turn back across the river. I see. Well, that was another loss of mine, and I wanted to resign once again, but Lincoln didn't want to lose me, so he signed me to the Department of Ohio. What happened after that? I eventually fought directly under Grant back in Virginia, but at the Battle of the Crater in 1864, I received blame for the death of Union troops in the explosion, even though I was not directly at fault. I was sent on leave and was never called. I finally resigned my position fully in April 15, 1865. So when you were done with the military, what did you do after the Civil War? Well, I immediately became active in politics and was a senator for the governor of Rhode Island for three terms from 1866 to 1868. I was also a senator, U.S. senator from, for Rhode Island and served from 1874 until September 13, 1881. September 13th, 1881. But that's when you died. Uh, uh. Ambrose Burnside was also known after his death for his unique facial hair, which has since been called Cyburns. This has been Scratchy Bo Jingles for Monkey Midnight News, MMN. So then he just ran away.
Really? That's that's really weird. Gonna eat that. <laughs> <laughs>